Good day, folks. Everything new under the sun. Here's your prophetic update for uh, Wednesday, August the 23rd. Now, breaking news. Uh, Prigozhin has apparently been murdered. He has been taken out uh, west of Moscow. Now, this is very interesting. This is really going to change up what is happening with the Wagner Group or Wagner Group in Russia, in Belarus, and the situation there. And we have news that uh, Medvedev is suggesting that um, Putin's next move is uh, Georgia. So a lot of stuff going on. So let's let's quickly cover this. And I'm gonna then I'm gonna take a look at an article about the economy and um, um, kind of the where some people are trying to head. Uh, but let's look at this. This is uh, zero hedge kind of breaking news. Uh, Wagner decries murder of Prigozhin amid reports anti-air missiles struck the plane. It says at this point it's looking like the entire top command of Russian mercenary outfit Wagner Group was aboard the private plane that was down northwest of Moscow hours ago. Wagner itself is confirming uh, Prigozhin's death with Wagner affiliate Telegram channel Grey Zone calling it murder. The murder assassination of Prigozhin will have catastrophic consequences. Now because it's a, um, a mercenary group, basically nobody has any idea of what's going to happen. Are they going to be a headless chicken just going to be flapping around? Or will there be significant unrest, uh, significant attacks, maybe another coup? Um, you know, who will step into the place of Prigozhin? Uh, was this a hit by uh, Putin himself, uh, you know, taking out his enemies and being very patient of it since the coup, uh, but taking someone out uh, and maybe, maybe in a way that he can blame Ukraine on it? Uh, it says, the people who gave the order do not understand the mood in the army uh, and morale at all. Let this be a lesson to all. You will always have to go to the end, Wagner uh, Channel statement reads. Uh, so the bodies of Prigozhin and his second-in-command, Dmitry Utkin, have reportedly been identified according to statements which have been quick to come out of Russian media. So they are quick to announce this, um, uh, maybe for power, for control, uh, so that uh, you know the Russian citizens know that uh, Putin's in command, and uh, you know any remnants of the coup are now removed. Um, and I suspect this is straight from Russia. Russian news agency TASS also made it official. Uh, Prigozhin and Utkin were on board the crashed Embraer plane. The Federal uh, Air Transport Agency reported. Uh, so this is apparently a picture of the crash. This plane is just uh, falling down. So that's Prigozhin's plane. Again, struck by some sort of uh, um, surface-to-air, uh, you know, air defense missile. Russian authorities said eight bodies have been recovered thus far. Um, a post by the Grey Zone Wagner Connected Group claimed Russian anti-air defenses had shot down the plane. So interesting. Two bursts of characteristic uh, air defense fire. Now, again, who is third in command of Wagner Group? Will there be any repercussions? Will there be a strike against uh, Putin of some sort? Maybe uh, they, maybe there was an assassination attempt or something that we don't know about, and, and Putin was, uh, and, and the security services were um, taking the, you know, cutting the head off the chicken, as it were. Uh, Prigozhin is dead, leader of Wagner Group, a hero of Russia, it says. Uh, so this is interesting. The speed at which Moscow government confirmed... Uh, to, uh, uh, let's see, the speed at which the uh, Russian government has confirmed Prigozhin was on a plane that crashed on a flight from Moscow to St. Petersburg, St. Petersburg should tell us everything we need to do. Biden uh, was on vacation and he, uh, he told reporters that he's not surprised that Prigozhin is dead. So that's a pretty flippant comment. Uh, he says, I don't know for a fact what happened, but I am not surprised, he says. He then pointed the finger at uh, Russian President uh, not much happens in Russia that Putin's not behind, said Biden. Uh, so there you go. Uh, that's fascinating. Again, um, we get into territory where nobody really knows what's going to happen. Uh, it could be absolute chaos here. Um, uh, the Wagner group could completely disintegrate because there is no head on that chicken. Or there could be a third in command or um, um, you know, something that they had planned on. Uh, in terms of, you know, should Prigozhin be taken out? Should Utkin be taken out? What is the plan? You know, whether it's for retaliation or redirecting uh, the Wagner group as a whole, the, the standing army in Belarus, etc., wherever they are. So this is significant. And at this point, really, nobody knows uh, what is happening.
On top of that, apparently uh, Putin has some other plans here. Medvedev hints at future Russian invasion of Georgia. The idea of joining Russia is still popular in Abkhazia and South Ossetia, Medvedev, a former Russian president, wrote in an article. So is this, you know, um, uh, getting information into the public side to get them comfortable with the idea from a prior politician? Is this all, uh, you know, uh, um, part of the... Uh, propaganda campaign that Putin uh, is pushing out. The idea of joining uh, Russia is popular, it says, uh, in an article published early Wednesday. It could quite possibly be implemented if there are good reasons for that, said Medvedev, who cast himself as one of Russia's most hawkish political voices uh, since its forces invaded in uh, February 2022. So that is fascinating. Now, Let's shift gears here. So that's kind of the breaking news. Um, nobody knows what's going to come of this, so we're going to watch this closely. But as it relates to the economy, uh, again, one of the pillars of Bible prophecy is you know the fact that the economy is going to be uh, destroyed or at least switch over to a new monetary system, and that uh, includes the mark of the beast. And we have this article from Zero Hedge, efforts to protect the U.S. intensify, and this is part of the Ukraine-Russia war as well, uh, amid global shift from dollar. So because the globally, countries are shifting from the dollar, so the BRICS nations came together and, and they're transacting you know, uh, oil payments and such in their own currencies, getting away uh, out of the U.S. dollar, not uh, requiring um, uh, the, the U.S. petro dollar uh, you know, for those transactions. It means the value of U.S. Uh, dollar decreases. Um, the interest in it decreases. And it also means there's an existential threat um, for the United States because the United States depends on the ability to print money, which comes from that uh, world reserve currency status of the U.S. dollar. If the U.S. dollar is not the world reserve currency, if there is losing value in it, then they can't print money and they have to to pay for the interest on the debt to China and to other nations. So this is an uh, absolutely existential threat if uh, the U.S. doesn't... Uh, stay in power and stay a hegemonic state, uh, you know, a world superpower, um, um, the economy will absolutely collapse of the United States. And this is coming down the line. Now, what many are doing are trying to move to a gold standard. With inflation plaguing the economy as the U.S. dollar is increasingly uh, being sidelined in international trade, potentially even at risk for losing its status as a global reserve currency, lawmakers in Washington and state capitals are touting gold and precious metals as a solution. So going back to the gold standard, that's a bold move, and that's really a desperate move, you know, for, for folks who understand uh, that we're in the dying days of the U.S. dollar as world reserve currency. Uh, congressional efforts would once again uh, back the U.S. dollar by uh, with gold. That means there could be, you know, an, another gold recall, gold confiscation to get U.S. gold reserves up. Um, so you could see that coming. Uh, and private sector players are trying to get into it, arguing that gold could be a defense against economic calamity as foreign governments and central banks stockpile record amounts of precious metals. In a series of interviews, state and uh, federal lawmakers working to restore gold as money argued that this was the best way to defend the dollar, stabilize the economy. Absolutely it is. But again, it, that means it's going to revalue the dollar. And because of all the debt that's out there in U.S. dollars, it is going to, you know, gold is not just going to be $2,000 an ounce. It is going to be $10,000, $20,000, $30,000 an ounce um, to make up for all that, to cover all that debt off. Um, the uh, uh, value of gold, which has been suppressed, is suppressed on the markets, on the paper market. Um, it's going to skyrocket, folks. And along with that is silver. So if you want to be on the bleeding edge of that and, and the Lord uh, tarries, um, you may be interested in getting into gold and silver. Now, not saying that it won't be confiscated or that the government won't try and confiscate it, uh, but it's one of those things that uh, is always going to be valuable. It has been for the last 6,000 years. Now, in Texas, they're looking to uh, create a, a gold depository, which, which is interesting. And here's an interesting statement by represent, uh, Representative Mark DeRazio. Uh, so he's a Republican representative. He introduced a bill to facilitate interstate trade in gold. Now, this is incredible. This is revolutionary in terms of the United States, uh, you know, currently. And look at this. He has the same timeline of, uh, of the return of the Lord and the history of the world as I do. Look at that. Over the last 6,000 years of history, is he a Christian? I wonder. Does he believe in creation? I, I wonder if he does. 
Does he know the timeline? Maybe he does. Over the last 6,000 years of history, and that is all of history that there is, gold and silver have kept their value and served as the standard. So absolutely, going back to gold and silver uh, would be a great standard. Will they? I, I don't know that they will. Some locations may try. Um, oh, what's his name in uh, Libya? Uh, tried to uh, go back to the gold standard and transact in gold. And what happened there? He was taken out, uh, the, the president of Libya, uh, Muammar Gaddafi. Uh, you know, U.S. went in there and took him out. Uh, was it because of money? Was it because he was threatening to implement a gold standard, which would um, undermine the U.S. dollar as a world reserve currency? Look out what the United States does uh, when their currency is in trouble. They take you to war or they take out the leaders who are trying to take them out. This is what the root cause of uh, Russia-Ukraine is. This is why the U.S. doesn't want to stop this battle, because they know it's a fight for the existence of their w world economic system as it stands right now. Eyes wide open, folks. Um, I think I will leave it there. Chinese are buying a lot of gold. You've heard that before. Um, gold and silver um, have been money for you know basically the last 6,000 years, the history of man. It's always been worth something and worth a lot. And in technology, especially solar panels, use a lot of silver. Uh, computer chips use gold, etc. Um, so there's a lot of actually um, manufacturing uses for it as well. It's very, very valuable. Um, so folks, just be aware of that. Uh, and I, I think, I guess the most important thing is the economy is crashing. We are going down fast. Nobody knows ex on exactly what date it's going to crash. But just before it does crash, look for, you know, possibly nuclear weapons to fly. Uh, World War III to start. Because uh, when they think they can't control it anymore, um, they will trigger a false flag or some other massive uh, event on the world stage. Maybe aliens, and I'm not kidding. Um, they may stage a, an alien encounter of some sort to uh, deflect and deceive and distract people from what is really going on. So be prepared, uh, folks. And, you know, this whole situation here, um, this uh, is happening real time. What is happening uh, in Russia? What is the Wagner Group going to do? Again, you know, breaking news. Uh, I watch this closely over the next 24 hours to see how the mercenaries deal with it. I'll leave there, guys, and uh, we'll see you in the next video.